From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. Johnny, you've handled a lot of difficult cases for the companies we represent. You've done a magnificent job, saved some of them a lot of money. Huh? Sometimes nipped things in the bud even before they've happened. Pat. And there have been times when you've given up personal plans to take them on at a moment's notice and without question. Listen, that bush you're beating around is getting pretty big. All right, then I'll get to the point. Johnny, why don't you take yourself a holiday at company expense? What? Lake Mojave Resort, maybe, where I understand you love to fish. At company expense, huh? That's right. Okay, Pat, I'll grab the first plane. Good boy. But, brother, just wait till you see the expense account I pile up for you. Why, Johnny... Because if I ever smelled a rat, believe me, it's now. Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wayward trout matter. Expense account item one, 174.50, plane fare, Hartford to Los Angeles and Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Item two, 50 bucks, deposit on a rental car. I headed south on Route 95. The Mojave Desert. Thousands of square miles of sand, sun-bleached gravel and rock, of cactus, sage, and Joshua trees. High flat mesas, towering crags. Countless trails leading off from the highway. Long abandoned roads leading up into the harsh bleak mountains. With their promise of infinite wealth to the prospectors who scratched away in their hungry search for silver and gold. And who knows, perhaps some of these were trails of the pioneers who beat a tortuous path westward to the Great Pacific. Who, with their oxen and heavy wagons, were lucky if they made six miles a day. Yet here I was, cruising along at an easy 60 miles an hour. And above me, a jet plane, lazily tearing off 600 miles an hour. Yeah, it made me think. About the men who lived and struggled here. The men who died of hunger and thirst following the same path I was taking. Never knowing that only a few miles away, beyond the mountains, was the mighty Colorado. Water, food, and life for those lucky enough to find it. But let's get to more practical things... Like Davis Dam and huge Lake Mojave. On the east bank at the lower end, Lake Mojave Resort, with its clean, modern cabins, boathouse, dock, and harbor. Everything for a fisherman. It was after 9 p.m. when I pulled in. My old friend Buster Faber was waiting for me. By golly, Johnny, I'm glad to see you. Yeah, same here, Buster. How are you? Before you start on why I'm here, how's the fishing? Uh, you remember Ham Pratt, the general manager? Sure do. How is he? Went out three days in a row, got three limits, five, six, seven pounders. Oh, and I have to come here on business. Yeah, but as soon as you clear it up, you and I are going to do some fishing. Believe me, we'd better. Now, what's the problem? Oh, well, here, let me, let me take your bags. <clears throat> You're in number eight. Okay. I'll put you right next to Mr. Hatch. Hatch? Old-time confidence man, Johnny, and just plain big-time thief. Oh, Gordon Hatch? That's the one. Used to operate up in San Francisco, over in Reno? Tried Drive... Las Vegas, too, but they ran him out. Sure, sure. He served a couple of short stretches for petty theft, things like that. But they could never nail him for anything big. That's right. Sit down. Yeah. Well, what's he doing here? Oh, ordinarily, we'd give a man like that some excuse about being full up, something like that. I should think so. But Ham and I decided if we let him stay and with somebody like you here, well, maybe we could do a kind of public service. Keep talking, Buster. Well, Tuesday morning, I got a call from some wealthy folks in Los Angeles. They wanted accommodations for themselves and their wives beginning tonight. Uh, they're doing now. So? Well, Tuesday afternoon, this Gordon Hatch came barreling in. My wife, Marilyn, not knowing who he was, put him in number seven. What are you getting at, Buster? Well, those folks from L.A. have been here before, Johnny, and the women always come with enough furs and jewelry... To a fishing resort? Well, you see, every night they drive up to Vegas to gamble and take in the fancy night spot. Ah, but what makes you think Hatch would come here just because of them? One of them's a lawyer that got him sent up for embezzlement once, and Hatch always swore that someday he'd get even. Oh, well, now, Buster... I don't think he'd try any rough stuff, anything like that. He isn't the type, but... Well, that's why I called Hartford. Well, what's the insurance angle? There isn't any. 
Unless a lot of heavily insured jewelry suddenly disappears from around here. And your man in Hartford was willing to play along with that. Yeah, I see. Well, so do I. Hmm? I see we have another guest buster. How do you do? My name is Gordon Hatch. Mr. Hatch, this is Johnny Dollar. He's come for a few days fishing the same as you. Excellent. We must go out together, Mr. Dollar. I found a couple of wonderful spots. Yeah, I understand you had pretty good luck, sir. Oh, didn't Ham Pratt tell you about the big one I got over near Sculpture Rock? Nearly ten pounds. I'm keeping him in a live box so I can take him back to Los Angeles and have him stuffed. Live box? Yes. It's a big sort of box made of heavy screen, Johnny. You leave it in the water, it'll keep the fish alive for days. That's right. Well, aren't you afraid somebody will walk off with them? Oh, the nice people who come to this nice place? Of course not. And as a fisherman, I'm sure you know that even the worst crook in the world wouldn't touch another man's catch. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, uh, excuse me, I, uh, I hear some cars coming down the road. Must be the folks I'm expecting. Why, of course, Buster. I'll see you later. Right. Any plans for the evening, Mr. Dollar? Oh, not particularly. I'm a little tired. Well, then come along into my cabin next door. I have some excellent scotch and plenty of soda. Oh, well, I've had a pretty long day. Now, look, we can relax and regale each other with tall tales about the big fish we've caught here and there. <laughs> After all, there isn't anything else to do out here of an evening. Oh, I kind of thought I'd wander down to the dock and see if Ham Pratt is about. Oh, I'll save that for tomorrow. Now, come along, Mr. Dollar. I won't take no for an answer. <laughs> Actually, I was glad for the invitation. I wanted to know more about this man, sound him out if possible, about his real reason for being here. As it turned out, we spent a very pleasant evening talking entirely about fishing. Only once, in answer to a pretty direct question, did he speak about what I wanted him to. That is all water over the dam, Mr. Dollar. If it's possible to make amends for some of the, shall we say, questionable things I may have done in the past, though, I can only assure you that I'm sincerely trying to make such amends. Please, please don't embarrass me this way again. Yeah, sorry. Now, tomorrow we'll go fishing. Well, uh... I'll not only take you to one of the hottest spots on the lake, but I'll show you the beauties I have in the live box. You'll turn green with envy. Right, Cap? Well, it's been a pretty long day, and I really should hit the sack. So should I. So, here we go. Bottoms up, and may tomorrow bring us each a limit. <laughs> then I will drink to. Ah. Now, there we are. And I'll see you at the crack of dawn. Sleep well. Right. Right? Wrong. Sure, I was tired. It had been a long day. But not long enough to make me drop off to sleep almost before I could get out of my clothes. That nightcap had had a lot more than scotch in it. Yeah, I'd fallen for one of the oldest tricks in the world. And until I woke up, anything could happen. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Donald? Donald? Sergeant Donald Bellwether? Please, Reba, can't you see I'm absorbed in the sports section? (laughs) So I see. Who's the girl in the bikini? A shot putter? Look, what's the difference if she's an athlete or a Hollywood celebrity? Why do you insist on disturbing me while I'm reading? Did you drop off the laundry this morning? Yes, dear. Did you mail my letters? Yes, I mailed the letters. Did you know that angry, brooding, and impatient drivers are the major cause of many accidents? Yes, I know. What? I said angry or impatient drivers behind the wheel cause many serious accidents. And when a driver is emotionally upset, he's... He's more apt to make an irrational decision or, or take unnecessary chances. My dear wife, you ought to know by this time that I am a well-adjusted individual. I have complete control over my emotions. You didn't have this morning. Now, just because I burned the toast, you stormed out of the house in a fit of rage. You didn't even kiss me goodbye. Mm-hmm. You're determined to pick a quarrel with me, is that it? No, I just want you to drive safely. I don't want you to be under any emotional strain when you drive a car. I want you to return home safely. I love you. Come here, woman. Yes, darling. You sit right here on my lap, and I'll give you that kiss you missed this morning. And you promise you'll never again drive the car when you're angry? I promise. Oh, oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. (laughs) 
And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Wayward Trout Matter. Mm. What? What, what is it? Hey, Johnny. Huh? Oh, it's Buster. You all right in there, Johnny? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm all right. Here, here. Holy oh, What time is it, anyway? Almost yeah. nine o'clock. Oh, <laughs> look at those big red eyes. <laughs> you aren't kidding. I feel as though I... Where's Gordon Hatch? Went out fishing at the crack of dawn. Said you'd promised to go with him, but he pounded on your door and finally gave up. Johnny, you look like you... Hey, really... Buster, the folks you were expecting in from Los Angeles. Yeah, they came right after I left you and Mr. Hatch last night. Six of them. I figured you wanted to be alone with Hatch to sort of feel him out. Yeah, I did. But is everything all right? Yes, so far as I know. The point is, did you learn anything from Mr. Hatch last night? Uh, Only that he claims to have turned over a new leaf is now the soul of integrity. Yeah? Well, I wonder. You say he's out fishing, huh? That's right. You know where he went? Well, one of his favorite holes, the one I told him about, is in the big basin about ten miles up the lake. What about the folks from L.A.? They're still asleep in their cabins. Hmm. Look... Johnny, like I told you, Hatch isn't the kind of trying any rough stuff, even against Mr. Fellows, the lawyer who sent him up one time. And he's here with that party? He's the one that organized it, made the reservations. Now, listen, Johnny, I, I may be all wrong about Hatch. In spite Hatch. of his threat to get even with Fellows? Well, I mean, maybe he's gone straight. He, well, he certainly acts like a nice enough guy. Yeah. Well, the only thing I could do is keep an eye on him. If he makes a play, I'll nab him. If he doesn't, well, my trip out here will have been wasted. Wasted? I thought you and I were going to do some fishing. Oh, well, now that's different. Ooh. Hey, I better get some breakfast in me. Yeah, sure. I'll tell Mary over at the cafe to have it ready for you. Yeah, okay, Buster. Sunny side up with plenty of strong, dark black coffee. My head felt like it might split open any second. And I was more sure than ever that Hatch had poured me a Mickey last night. Yet he had expected me to go out on the lake with him this morning. Must have been nearly 10 a.m. by the time I'd showered, shaved, dressed, and joined Buster at the little cafe. Already half a dozen early morning anglers had come back to boast about their catches and the big ones that got away. Now, 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 don't you tell us old, Buster, but that big one, Buster, he must have been eight, eight and a half pounds. Yeah, I'm sure it was, Mr. Hector. Well, the place I lost him was in the second cove this side of the dam by the big square rock. Second cove this side of the dam, did you say? That's right, right next to the big square rock. Hey, Jim, I know a great spot for us to try this afternoon. Yeah, I heard that too. Now, don't you tell us all about that spot, Buster. Cross my heart, Mr. Hector. Good, good. Say, Henry, Henry, I want to tell you about a place I found You uh, feeling any better, Johnny? Yeah, much. Now, Listen, if Gordon Hatch is up here after the money and jewelry of Mr. Fellows and his party, or for any reason at all connected with them, yeah. I think you and I had better hop into a boat and go... Mr. Fellows. Oh, yes, Miss Fellows. Good morning. Please come outside quickly. Come on, Johnny. All right. Miss <laughs> Fellows, this is Johnny Dollar, friend of mine, special investigator. Oh, thank goodness you're here, Mr. Dollar. Buster... We'd been robbed. What? When, Mrs. Fellows? Sometime during the night. All our jewelry, Mrs. Harkins and Mrs. Peterson's and mine. Why, it must be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. My diamond brooch alone is worth... I see you found him, Martha. Yes, Ralph. Oh, this is Mr. Dollar, and he's some kind of an investigator. Good. I've heard of you, Dollar. I've told them, Ralph, about the jewelry. Yeah. Well, whoever did it got our money, too. With all we brought along to gamble in Vegas, it must be over 20000 and how he managed to sneak into our cabins... And or... without waking us, too. Of course, we were pretty tired last well, night. Well, well, good morning. Oh, Mr. Pratt. Oh, what seems to be... The... Johnny, glad to see you. How are you, Ham? I got some bad news for you. Yeah, Ham, it looks like he's done it. Oh? Gordon Hatch? Yeah. Better make a thorough search of his cabin. Gordon Hatch? Oh, no. I'm afraid so. Great Scott. So, Ham, look in his luggage, under the mattresses, anywhere else you can think of. Right, Johnny. Mr. Dollar, do you mean to say that Gordon Hatch is here at this point? Uh, Better look in his car, too, Ham. Under the car and the upholstery. Look here now, Mr. Dollar. Sorry, Mr. Fellows. I'll have to talk to you later. Come on, Buster. You and I are going for a boat ride. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Do you know who Uncle Sam's lawyer is? If your answer is the Attorney General, you're absolutely right. But being legal advisor to the President and other governmental agencies is only part of his job. His main task is running the Department of Justice 
which makes sure that the laws passed by Congress are carried out, and that lawyers are available when the government must be represented in court. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is some question concerning the amount or kind of tax you should pay, or suppose you and the government don't agree as to which of you owns certain land. That's when the Department of Justice steps in to represent the government side of the case. If anyone is brought to trial for counterfeiting, smuggling, gold hoarding, or passport forging, the Department of Justice prosecutes the case. It also handles all matters dealing with legal immigration. And all of this activity is the responsibility of an important member of the President's cabinet, the Attorney General. Just as it is the duty of the United States government to protect each and every one of you, it is the duty of the Attorney General to protect the government of the United States. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Wayward Trout Matter. Lake Mojave was calm as a mill pond, and Buster made the spray fly as we headed almost due north up toward the big basin. But we didn't have to go that far. Buster, with the sharpest eyes I've ever known, spotted the ripples from the wake of a boat that had pulled into a deep, winding cove on the Arizona side. Hang on, Johnny. Looks to me like Hatch's boat went in that cove. You mean to say you can tell what boat made that wake? Plain as a pair of footprints in the sand when the lake is calm like this. First thing I want to do is inspect that boat of his. You think he might have the jewelry and money on board? Ah, uh, he's too smart to have left them around the cabin or his car. Look, that's his boat in there, all right. Tied up that low, rocky ledge that sticks out. What under the sun is he doing there between his boat and that ledge? Well, it looks to me like he's trying to hide something there in the water. Well, we'll soon find out. Well, Buster, Mr. Dollar, it looks like you've caught me in the act. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks that way, doesn't it, Hatch? Uh, what were you so busy shoving down in the water between your boat and that ledge when we pulled out? Hey, well, I figured no one would find it here, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I'll bet. But I decided to move the live box into this hidden cove when I first came out this morning. The live box? Well, after all, it was you who warned me someone might try to steal some of these beautiful fish I've caught and I'm keeping alive in it. But as long as you found me out, well, here... Take a look at them. Not a thing here on his boat, John. Here, look at them. Ever see such a nice mess of bass in your life? Yeah, they, uh, they're beauties. And that trout on the bottom. I got him way up the lake yesterday morning. Must be ten pounds. That's the one you plan to have stuffed? That's the one. Well, you better have it done pretty soon. He looks dead to me. Yes, he was this way when I came out this morning. So, when I'm through fishing today, I'll head back to L.A. with him to a taxidermist. Hatch... There's something I want to talk to you about. I know, Dollar. But it's your own fault. Huh? I found it on your door till I thought I'd wake the dead. Oh, no, no, that isn't what However, I'm since you're here now, well, why not keep our fishing date now? Hmm? Mr. Hatch, will you please... Darn it, though, I don't have an extra rod in my boat. Well, come on, Johnny. I'll give you one out of my boat. Rod and reel. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, okay. Dollar, I'll take you to fishing spots even Buster doesn't know about. Not a sign of the jewels and stuff on this boat, Johnny. Huh? He even went through his tackle box. Well, maybe he's hidden the stuff somewhere along the shore. If he's the one who took it. Uh, he looks and talks as innocent as a baby. So the only thing I can do is keep an eye on him and try to feel him out. Come on, boys. Time's a-wasting. Oh, uh, here, Johnny, you try this rod on for size. Ah, well, that looks good to me. And here, take along a couple of these fast strike minnow hooks. If anything, they'll get you big bass. They sure will. Yeah, or maybe a trout like the one that Mr... What's the matter, Johnny? Come on, Mr. What? What's the matter? Well, it's about time. What were you two gabbing about over there? Say, Hatch, I want another look in the live box at that big trout. I don't blame you a bit. Well, step into the boat and I'll raise the top so you can really see it. No, I think I'll pull the whole contraption up here on the ledge. That'll take the fish out of the water. Well, you said that trout was dead early this morning. Well, that's right. Then why is he on the bottom of this thing? Why isn't he floating belly up? Here now. I don't know, but I don't see... Now, wait, what are you doing? Oh, those beautiful fish in there will die like the trout. Oh, I just want a real close look at that trout. Oh, just a minute. These live ones will hold still long enough for me to... Dollar, put them back in the water. Here we are. 
Ooh. Ten pounds? Let's hear now. Why, this fish weighs 20 pounds if he weighs an ounce. Dollar? And no wonder the way you've got him stuffed full of... Well, how about this? A beautiful diamond brooch. No wonder you decided to get back to L.A. And not to stuff this trout, but to unstuff him. And how about this bracelet? Emeralds, aren't they? And look at these nice new $100 bills. A bit wet, perhaps. You're holding more than money and jewels in your hand, Dollar. Oh, now, put that thing away. I'm talking about your life. And I won't hesitate to pull this trigger unless you toss that money and those jewels into this boat. While I toss this over at you, Mr. Hatch? Put it down, Buster, or I'll shoot you, too. Toss me the jewels, Dollar. Toss them. And Buster, stay where you are. How about the whole trout, Mr. Hatch? (laughs) All right, drop that! Boy, Johnny. Johnny, you really clobbered him. Yeah, but... Oh, Buster, if you hadn't thrown that oar... Uh, and if you hadn't hit him in the face with that wet fish, Johnny, he would have plugged you. Yeah, yeah, Buster. I always did like trout. Expense account total, including boat and bait for five days of really great fishing, cabin rental and meals, and trip back to Hartford, $815 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Eleanor Audley, Larry Dobkin, Barney Phillips, Edgar Barrier, Junius Matthews, Russell Thorson, and Alan Reed. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. <laughs> Truly, Johnny Dollar has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.